Hi, let's discuss today about the combustion in furnaces and what is the role of instrumentation and controls in the process. Let's try to understand the combustion process first uh, because that's all what happens inside the uh, furnaces resulting into the development of enormous heat. So if you see the typical principle of a burner, uh, you have um, oil coming through a, a small nozzle in the pipe. Surrounding the annulus, you have the air coming through the, boy, the blower. And here it's basically your air and fuel is getting mixed and thereby with the ignition, you are getting the, um, you know, the heat and the frame. That's exactly what's happening. So a burner is nothing but a, uh, you know, fuel and air mixer in right proportion. That's exactly. So if you see the combustion principles, anything which burns to give heat in the presence of oxygen, uh, we normally call it as a fuel. But combustion is nothing but the process of burning the fuel, right? You H2 plus O2, H2O, right? Carbon plus oxygen, carbon dioxide, uh, CH4 plus O2, CO2 plus H2O. So these are the governing equations of heat. Ultimately, every fuel should have a carbon content in it in order to react with the oxygen content that is in the air released to carbon dioxide. This is a very fundamental equation of uh, um, combustion, we uh, normally call it. So different fuels, um, solid fuels, liquid fuels, gaseous fuels range from their categorization based on the carbon content in the fuel. And oxygen, with a kind of 21% oxygen volume by volume that's available in the air, it is always um, you know, combustible. Uh, combusting the combustible for the carbon to react and uh, thereby producing carbon dioxide and the release of carbon dioxide is always associated with heat. So this is what it happens. Fuel plus oxygen uh, you know, it develops the heat and that heat, it comes back. This heat further regenerates the process of um, uh, carbon and oxygen uh, thereby releasing into the exhaust. So that's exactly the fundamentals of carbon. If you see the combustion efficiency, once you measure the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, you can always estimate it. Uh, other than if you have a delta output, change in output by change in input is always the combustion. So heat out by heat in is also another combustion efficiency. But just by measuring the carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, we can also arrive at the combustion efficiency. So this is a, uh, just an example of giving different fuel combinations, how much oxygen it requires to proportionately uh, develop the uh, energy, right? CO2, the presence of oxygen, the more and more uh, uh, denser fuels, you require more and more oxygen resulting into more carbon dioxide, that's and plus energy. So the release of carbon dioxide is always associated with uh, energy and different fuels have different levels of requirement of oxygen for producing the energy and heat. So this is one such example of uh, you know, reactants and products. Here the reactants are nothing but uh, methane plus uh, oxygen present in the air. We have both oxygen and nitrogen. Luckily, nitrogen is inert. And oxygen is only the combustion that gives rise to you know, heat. And uh, this heat is resulting into carbon dioxide, hydrogen oxides and nitrogen, water and um, nitrogen oxide, nitrogen. So uh, because of the enormous heat and the oxides, you also have the whatever little content of sulfur that is present in the fuel, uh, they will be converting into SO2, SO3, and in the presence of H2O and SO3, H2SO4, and N2O, H2O, HNO3, and N2O, nitrogen oxides. So all these are the um, products of uh, combustion which will be uh, escaping through the flue gases. That's nothing but the exhaust chamber, uh, or uh, we also call it as chimney. So when it comes to the zone of maximum efficiency, you always require stoichio more than 20% more than the stoichiometric requirement of oxygen uh, or air that you are getting, which we normally call it as excess air because every the air to fuel ratio is normally 14 is to one. So for every uh, kg of ox, uh, carbon, you need to give 14 kgs of um, air. So other than that, you also have a stoichiometric requirement. Beyond this, you need to give a a minimum, um, 10, around 10%, you may have a maximum uh, um, zone of efficiency and it is tolerable up to 20%. If you see this, uh, loss, burnt, loss due to unburnt fuel will be uh, more uh, in the region of less, ox less air. And if it is more air, you have a loss due to heat in the stack. So 
both ways are not desirable and this is exactly the zone um, of maximum efficiency where we require the combustion so this is exactly the combustion efficiency zone which is around 10 to 20 percent of excess air so this is the stoichiometric uh, combustion uh, requirement which says uh, c plus o2 co2 for every 12 grams of carbon you require 32 grams of oxygen uh, o2 and to give a 44 grams of co2 carbon dioxide that's the stoichiometric um, combustion requirement but beyond that you also need to give some excess air to have a proper combustion that's exactly this is the zone you will see here fuel you have more and uh, this is the efficiency you will be more at the highest efficiency of you know around four percent of uh, oxygen and you should have a more minimum carbon monoxide and around 13 percent of carbon dioxide you should have in the field so uh, around four percent of oxygen is the most uh, appropriate level of high efficiency combustion uh, when we uh, take the combustion efficiency into fact then this is a typical uh, this entire square you can take it as a furnace um, and uh, this is a uh, burner which is mixing the fuel and the air resulting in the flame and this flame is going through different passes before it is escaping to the uh, chimney this is exactly the construction of a typical uh, furnace and this is an another type of a um, gas fired burner yeah, you have the gas coming in and you have the air coming in uh, once you have the spark then it is like a spontaneous ignition and continuous combustion takes place uh, in a gas based burner so if you see a, a schematic of a combustion process you have a fuel storage it may be a liquid fuel where you are atomizing it every fuel can burn only in the vaporized form atomization form so then you have the combustion air both are preheated by a given uh, uh, quantities and then the moment it is coming here uh, you have a spontaneous uh, ignition in the presence of heat and flame and so that you will have a continuous sustenance of the flame in the presence of continuous fuel and air present in that so this is a, a solid fuel fired uh, burner where we have a coal and primary uh, air both are coming simultaneously because the primary air which is a preheated air uh, is almost transporting the pulverized coal uh, through this then you have the secondary air coming through the annulus of the burner and then getting the um, combustion here coal air and heat meet and react resulting in the combustion heat this is exactly what happens inside the furnace of a coal fired burner so this is again you have a dual fuel burner you have a, a retractable oil burner oil is coming here and the gas is coming through this annulus this entire thing is a circular cross section and uh, you have oil and gas coming through this and uh, uh, ignition this you have an ignition tube here and this is the uh, air box okay air is coming through this and you have an ignition tube and a flame detection mechanism here and you have oil jet primary air ports and gas ports so you have a continuous uh, combustion that is taking place in this uh, fuel burner so this is a typical application where we have an energy part we have a gas and oil coming through the burner to the burner and then the blower here is giving the air and thereby resulting in the flame this entire thing is a furnace and uh, this furnace where you have enormous heat this heat is being used to heat the water that is going through the pipes that is there and it's given for a different uh, thing 15 is nothing but a radiator for releasing the uh, heat and um, this uh, flame while giving the heat to the pipe that is going through whether you have a water or any other inside and then going through the chimney to the flue gases so releasing the heat so you are utilizing the heat here so you have energy and combustion process is taking place and because of which you are using the heat and this heat is being utilized here that's exactly what happens inside a furnace now this is a air staged burner design this is anyway another example of you have a primary fuel 100 percent fuel and then you have a first stage air and then second stage air and more additional stages of air in order to have a because you are having partial combustion here then you have a complete combustion here so the typical uh, you know instrument a role of instrumentation where you are actually controlling the thing number one you have a furnace pressure control valve on top and then uh, you will see here this is a, there are two lines here one is a fuel that is coming through a control valve coming through the um, uh, switch valve open through, through the burner and there is another air where we have a combustion air through the valve again through a control valve 
given in a fixed proportions to the burner so the air which is before it goes into the uh, the burner it's getting preheated in the regenerative heat because the heat is available here it's getting uh, preheated and then going you see similarly the fuel um, which is uh, is coming here and directly going to the burner so that's exactly uh, what we have uh, for the typical controls in a, in a furnace although there are auxiliary controls like uh, you know uh, control valve for exhaust gases taking out the exhaust gases and um, how we are controlling the combustion air and all such things this is another example of a, you have a furnace here and a flow control you have a fuel is sending flow control valve this valve is controlled by sensing the combustion control system which is taking the feedback from the percentage of carbon monoxide present in the exhaust and percentage of oxygen present in the thing so based on these two signals feedback plus the temperature this combustion control system regulates the fluid flow control by regulating the uh, both the air inlet and the fuel inlet so you will see here one uh, control is coming to the flow control of fuel and another control signal is going to the flow control of air and according proportionately you are mixing this getting the uh, required heat and the feedback is always through the flue damper so this is simply the how we control the combustion control system in furnaces so this is another automatic uh, controllers where by sensing the oxygen in situ measurement where we have online measurement and giving to the controller here and this controller is opening the valves of the fuel line and the air line you will see here uh, trimming of the both the fuels fuel line this is a fuel line uh, which is going it is opening or closing thing and similarly same uh, line is controlling the air air blower and um, you have the fuel coming in and you have the air coming in and these two are getting mixed up in the burner and then run. so the exact combustion control is sensed by the oxygen if it is around uh, 4 4% is considered to be the highly efficient anything more than this or less than that will be controlled both carbon and con fuel content fuel flow and the air flow that's how we control the combustion um, heat within a furnace so this is another classic example of you are having the fuel you are having the air and this is an exhaust you are sensing the uh, oxygen and this is a different ratio controller uh, giving the flow flow controller flow transmitter and controlling that so you are basically sensing the flow transmitter and then uh, how proportionately how much you should give it then you are giving the signal to this then the ratio you are giving the signal flow controller decides what should be the proportional air thing similar thing happens into the um, uh, fuel here because here we have the control valve we are sensing the flow here and then getting the um, feedback what should be the thing based on the temperature available then accordingly controlling the fuel so this is exactly uh, the another method of controlling the furnace and this is a typical uh, you know uh, diagram where you have a, this is a line uh, of a fuel flow line uh, where we have precisely giving how much should be the kgs per second or kg of air fuel that we have to give and ultimately it is given to the pid control before it goes to the fuel valve similarly you have another thing which is normally air air route and here you are taking sensing from the uh, exhaust uh, oxygen and then precisely giving what should be the oxygen level and uh, you, that, that's how you are fixing the air to fuel ratio before you giving it to a pid controller and uh, you are also setting a set point here based on the steam pressure and the uh, oxygen and this based on the set point this pid controller regulates the air damper in order to give a controlled um, air flow to the burner so these two are that's why you are giving a controlled fuel supply and air supply resulting in a proper combustion for a maximum combustion efficiency so that's all about the um, instrumentation and controls involved in combustion and furnaces thank you very much